Welcome back, everybody. So it rained last night and the rain has erased everything on the on the road so i'm looking for tracks we've had coyotes coming through every morning i see new tracks from the coyotes coming through so let's see what we got here we go good girl yep there's two front and back foot coming together there front and back foot coming together there yep yeah yeah we had another coyote come through there it is, running through every morning. It comes through the exact same way. It goes right down my road. So it came from this way. There's scouts tracks compared. They're huge. Yep, there they are. They're very light. It was running. Yep, you can see the four foot pads. Yep. Oh. Oh, good girl. Oh, yeah, let's go see where the coyote tracks go. Let's see where the coyote tracks go. Yep, there they are. There's another one. Yep, so it came right through here. Yep, right through there. Yeah, it's amazing. I knew I'd find the tracks. Find them every morning. The wind usually blows them, the tracks away from the day before, or at least messes them up enough to where it's easy to see the new ones in the morning. But after it rains like this, everything's been erased. So now we'll see if and where there's any pack rats. Yep, we'll see any tracks that we're leaving right now. Like baby girl, she's, boy, she's very excited today. Yep, somebody came down our road. I think that was Rady. Rady came by yesterday evening. It's very easy to see when people come out here. I've been seeing pack rat activity coming across here, but it seems to have stopped. Maybe I finally got this one. Yeah, I don't see any tracks. Everything leaves tracks in this stuff. Okay, we're out here at the graveyard. Subi came out here for a minute and noticed if you look by that rock down there there's a little tiny baby bunny rabbit sitting there sue saw it hop a couple of times and then it went over there and it's just been frozen in that position and i don't know if it's frozen from fear or if it's just really really hot it's not an adult i've seen the adult bunny hopping around here it's that's a little cottontail but that's just a baby looks like it's i don't know about a quarter of the way grown, probably about five inches long, but it's just sitting there. Wow, I can't believe it's letting me get this close. So Subi put a little bit of water and some carrots. I mean, I doubt it's gonna eat the carrots. It doesn't know what a carrot is, but look at it just laying there. It must be frozen in fear. What do you think, Sue? Yeah. Let's leave and then maybe it'll come drink the yeah. water. Yeah, maybe it'll come out of there. It's so cute. It's really hot out right now. Right now it's probably... it's just hot. I think it's yeah. Just, well, it's scared. It's like keeping a low profile. Right now it's probably about 96 degrees. It's keeping a low profile because it's hot. Yeah. You can tell that we're here. I can't believe it's letting me it's get so that cute. close. <laughs> oh, little buddy. All right, let's leave him. Maybe he'll go get a drink. Yeah, I can see him breathing like super fast. It's yeah. real shallow. Must be a defense mechanism. He's pretending like he doesn't exist. Okay, we'll come back later and see if he... See if any of the hopefully he makes it back to his nest where his mama's at. Scout, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you being silly? All right, so it's like a quarter after five. And it looks like we have what I'm gonna call a smoke sunrise. Getting ready to go into Flagstaff for some supplies. We're gonna leave really early while it's nice and cool. 
Wow, look at that. All right, everybody, there's the slate fire. Wow, definitely jumped both sides wow, of 180. Look at this side. Yeah, look at all that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Still smoking. Still smoking. Oh, the poor animals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, look at that. It, it's like some patches of grass are still sitting there unburned. Some trees are untouched. Wow, look at all this. You can tell it, it swept through here really fast because it didn't hardly burn the trees. So a lot of people don't know, but the ponderosa pine, which are these big pine trees, are actually fire resistant. They have a very thick layer of bark on them that actually is designed to burn and shed off. They're basically the kind of trees that are designed to have the bottom burned off and they, stay, they can stay alive. Wow, it just goes on forever. Yeah. Big fire, burned a lot of stuff. didn't even burn this side of the road at all. Imagine that, look, this side got totally torched. This side didn't get touched. Well, it got a little torched, look. No, that's from a previous fire. Oh, you're right. Look it at is. the grass. Yeah, you're right, that was burnt up before. Yeah, look at the grass, there's no, the grass didn't even get burned at all. Well, I bet those people that have houses down here, down this way more, are nervous. Oh yeah. But I, that's probably where they put all their resources was at the houses, you know. So the flies being this bad this year, uh, they came out about the normal time, which uh, usually it's sometime during May. This year it was about the middle of May. Last year around the middle of May is when the flies came out. We were all up at uh, Cinder Hills, just north of Flagstaff. And, uh, you know, we had flies there. When we got here to the property, they were a few more but not much worse but this year they came out in the middle of may and they have just progressively gotten worse and worse and just in the last like three or four days they've gotten really really bad i mean there's a couple of spots over in aja's camp where they seem to be uh swarming around some of the trees and uh everybody right now in northern arizona is dealing with this you know um as evidenced by all the stores being sold out of every type of fly trap and fly spray, fly strips, uh, doesn't matter, you know, if they're, it's all, uh, everybody's dealing with the same thing. So it's just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <clears throat> and these flies that we have up here, they're the, the deer flies and uh, some of them actually can bite. Um, they give you kind of what feels like a mosquito bite and uh, yeah, it sucks <laughs> and the dogs don't like it I mean uh, the other day I let poor Scout out and while she squatted over going to the bathroom there were 10 flies landing on her face and she couldn't move to do anything about it because she was going to the bathroom and I, I <laughs> feel for the poor dog you know <laughs> so here's some more evidence of just how bad the flies are here right now I filled this bucket up, not yesterday, but the day before in the afternoon with dishwater for uh, the mice. And uh, look how many, look how many flies this thing has collected. It's just insane. And when you step outside, I mean, they just are immediately swarming around you. Even while I'm smoking a cigar, they are just swarming around you. Okay, I don't know if... The color is coming through on the camera, but if you, can you see their little eyes? The flies here have these 
beady red eyes. <laughs> you can see them in the bucket as they're laying there all dead. They all have these beady red eyes. So me and Scout are out taking a walk this morning. There she is. Come on, Scout. Come on. She's got a chew stick. <clears throat> so you'll notice I'm wearing a sweatshirt. It actually was clear last night and it cooled down. We got down to the upper 40s, which is nice. I've gotten used to the warmer weather. So we survived the first wave of the heat wave uh, without a problem. I noticed yesterday there was another fire. We went to Flagstaff and Flagstaff was completely covered with smoke and it was coming from a fire that's just south of Williams. So I know that they had a bunch of areas on evacuation alert and uh, I looked south and I can't really see any smoke coming up from it right now. So they must have got some control over it overnight when the wind died down and everything. So uh, that's good. I also read online that uh, the uh, Coconino National Forest is going to be closed to camping and the uh, Kaibab National Forest is also closed. That's going to do a lot to a lot of nomads. There's a lot of people that are boondocking that uh, aren't going to have anywhere to go now here in northern Arizona. Um, you know, and the other choices are to go to... Uh, Utah or Colorado, you know, or even uh, Idaho or Oregon or Washington and all those places are already extremely crowded So I don't know where all these people are gonna go. You know, there's a lot of places around Flagstaff uh, that are not actually in the not actually in the National Forest that are closed down and I think that uh, you know, the, the few areas that are open around Flagstaff, you know, are just, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be chaos. I have a couple of other projects that I'm going to be making videos of that I'm doing this week. Uh, one of them I'm going to wait to do. It's uh, actually fixing a pretty major problem that we had and I'll make a whole video about it. But anyway, I'm going to wait to do that until tomorrow when it's going to be cooler. Tomorrow is going to be, uh, the high is only supposed to be like 79 or something. So it's going to be a lot cooler. It's going to be uh, easy to work outside. And yesterday she didn't get much of a walk or much of a run. And we went to town and she had been in the car and she was not, uh, not very happy about it. But yeah, with all the boondocking closing, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm glad to be here on my own property where... You know, I mean, yes, I could drive to somewhere where it's a little bit cooler, but uh, honestly, most places, you know, unless you go up into Colorado and, um, you know, Sioux has asthma. So really, honestly, 7,000 feet, that's about it for what we can do in elevation. And here at 6,000, we've noticed uh, she doesn't seem to have a problem. All of our friends that go boondock there every year, um, I, I wish we could go but uh, it's just not in the cards for us. So, you know, being that you got to stay at, you know, 7,000 feet or below during the summer, you know, that's why we've just decided to stay here this year. Uh, just like we stayed last summer. Last summer we did the air conditioner the whole time and ran the generator a ton. And honestly, it, it's easier to just get used to the warmer temperature. I found, me and Sue found, that going through the temperature fluctuation between it being really hot and then going into the air conditioning in and out and in and out all day long, especially with the puppy, um, both of us, you know, usually get a, a bad cold and sinuses are terrible. And it would be even more so now because with the puppy, it's not like homie, he has to only go out maybe once or twice a day. That's it. You know, out of the, literally, he'll go out twice out of 24 hours. That's it. That's all he wants to do. This dog, you know, she's got to go out 15 or 20 times. And honestly, the, when we had that heat wave, there was only five days where it was really hot. And then we're back to where it's cooling down again. So, and with the forest closing down, I think, uh, Jeff said he may be moving on to Colorado. So, you know, for us staying put is more about one, just the peace and quiet and solitude. I'm lucky if I see a car drive down my road, honestly, once or twice a month. That's it. You know, I can hear, I can hear cars coming from miles away out here. It's great. I walk the entire property uh, at least every other day and I can see all the tracks of everything that's been on the property anywhere, which is awesome. Animals, people, doesn't matter. You cannot physically move across 
the land we have here without leaving marks on the ground that can be easily seen. That's just the way the dirt is out here. It's so dry and powdery, the powder preserves uh, tracks so perfectly until the wind takes them away sometime during the day. And in the morning, you can see everything. I can see exactly, you know, if coyotes came through on the property, if they crossed the border. I don't know what I do is I just walk the border and I can see if they've crossed the border anywhere. I can see the foot tracks. Um, you know, coyotes stand out really well. So do the pack rat tracks and beautiful day. Got some strange clouds in the sky today. These three big striped ones here, they're kind of starting to separate. There's some lines in the sky. Definitely strange. I'll leave that up to you to what you think it is. Hey, heel. Heel. Good girl. Good girl. Scout heel. I've been working on this with her. She's able to walk. I mean, she's she's still learning. She's still getting better at healing, but I mean, look at this. Loose leash. She's walking right next to me. Her nose is leading almost even with my foot when I step forward. She's starting to get it. She's a good dog. She's a smart dog. Let's see if she'll do another trick. Come here. Scout, sit. Sit. Good girl. Scout, shake. Scout, shake. Good girl. Good girl. Scout, shake. Good girl. Good girl. I got something for you. I got something for you. There you go. I feed her little pieces of this beef jerky that I got for dogs. I can break off little tiny pieces. She loves it. So now I haven't weighed her, but I'm guessing she's probably 45 pounds. She's really getting, starting to get big. You can see she's, her head is even with my, the top of my knee now. Yes, you're a good girl. Come here. Oh yes, you're a good girl. Yeah, come here. 